So let's get into this. Um, I want to pick up where we left off last week. And uh, really, I got to get you to see the kingdom of God and the position that we're in. If you're selfish in this walk, you are not going to comprehend well what God wants to do through you. Selfish meaning you're only concerned about what you're going through, your problems, your situation, your sickness, your financial difficulties, your loneliness, you know, your problems, the people in your life, enemies in your life, you know, rejection, <clears throat> people that should have been there for you, wasn't it? It's all about you. If that is the case, what happens then is that you are you you lose focus on the big picture. You you now and I notice this is it takes some humbling and it also takes another level of maturity. You know, you're just a tree in the forest. When someone's trying to burn the whole forest down, you can't be concerned about the tree. Now, that is the most unselfish thing you can do in the kingdom of God. That is not about my problems, but it's about the kingdom problem. I've got to be concerned about the kingdom. And the kingdom of God, no matter how people of faith don't want to admit this, the, the church looks weak. The church looks fake. The church doesn't look like something someone would want to follow. Most of you follow God because he lives in you. For whatever reason, you're chosen. Amen. Do you, do you Amen. gonna talk back? Yes. Amen. All right, I'm gonna put you out. But uh, for whatever reason, you're chosen. All right. And now that you're chosen, because some of you have never experienced the power of God, but yet you're committed to Him. Yet you love Him. You know you would never. You know, even before you came here, you knew you and God had a special relationship. Amen. Amen. You knew that. Even before you decided you was going to just be sold out to him, I'm going to fight to live for him. You know, even when I was in my I just knew God had something special about yes. me and him. Yes. Well, you have to understand, to serve a God that you have absolutely no proof of other than an emotion, it, that's a certain double level of spiritual maturity. Come on. Now, you understand, God don't need your help in your testimony. No. Now, what, what does that mean? You, you start lying a little bit to help God out. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 you have to say, well, you know, I want to thank God. God did this for me, blah, blah, blah. God said, yeah, right. I didn't have to do it, but you lied on the application. <laughs> you lied on the application to get that, so you really can't tie my name to it. You can't, you know, I mean, that time I was teaching about people's children, and if you had your child out of wedlock, how you can't be trying to talk about what God, there are things you can do to get whatever you want, but you can't tie God's name to everything, every, everything you do. Now you thank God for the children, but you can't say God gave you. You got them children. I mean, you don't like that. No, you don't. You don't know that, right? But see now, the, the, the situation is everybody that, that, that rob a bank and get a nice car can't come to church and say God gave me the car. How you got it is what put God's signature on it. All right? That don't make you better or worse or anything like that. We've got to deal with facts. We can't serve God based off our experiences and reduce him from his holy place to a place to where we live to make it all right. It is what it is. Amen. Come on now. Come on. Amen. It is what it is. That is a door. No matter what I've done, I can never call it a window. Amen. You understand? It's a door. So people say, yeah, but but I know you got, yeah, I know, I know what I've done. But it don't change that that's a door. People begin to reduce God or try to ex make excuses or justify the things we've done when we wasn't sold out to him. That's true. You understand? And, and the problem is because you feel like you owe people an explanation for your life. Amen, amen. Say, you're 15, you're all 15 of mine. How many baby mamas you got? 15. <laughs> One each. You got to spread it out. One each. And now people will look at my 15 kids, my 15 baby mamas, and then they're going to think I owe them an explanation to explain myself. Well, I got 15. I owe you nothing. Right. 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 Come on now. If I was in church, you know how to tell them, right? I'll say, mind your business. But I, I had a little word in the beginning, you understand? But I'm sanctified right now, as long as y'all don't piss me off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't owe people an explanation. You owe everything to God. And when you become concerned about what God wants to do on the earth, and the way the church looks, the church, the body of Christ, Christendom, is never consulted when the nation wants to make decisions. Decisions are made off business, not off the glory of God. But if the church was the church, Amen. they would talk to us. Amen. They would. You know, this political garbage that a lot of evangelicals are connected to is no more than a racist movement for a lot of them. Some of them never put politics on TV till the dark skin guy was running. No, you need to do, you need to do some, 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 some searching. 
It didn't matter that it was a Republican or Democrat. This is the Lord's house, all welcome. The black guy get in there, they done turned the whole TV station. Then, listen, I don't care what nothing about what Trump is doing, because Trump don't call my destiny. Do you understand that? Amen. But but when when you take the money you ask people, you told people to get the money in so that you can spread the gospel, so that you can uplift, prophesy. Then you, in return, make the whole broadcast about promoting Trump. I think that's a problem. You lied to get that money. That tell me God ain't got nothing to do with you. Because that money you on TV when you're alive, you should have told the people we are starting a Republican movement and we want you to send donations. Amen. So when Jimmy Baker get on and give a whole hour to Trump, well, that's a problem. That's a serious problem. That's a serious issue. And you got to get to the place that you understand clearly that I am not going to be someone that is going to allow the... the uh, TV evangelists to control what I'm doing, what I'm going, and all this stuff. You can't allow that. Amen. Do you understand? Here's what, here's what you got to do. You got to be more focused on what God wants to do in the earth. And not being political minded, not being uh, uh, whether I'm black, white, green, Mexican, whether I'm free, whether I'm, I'm somewhere on the border in some cave. All that. Forget all that. What does God want to do? And that got to be my push. Amen. That got to be my focus. Because if we don't push the glory of God, things, look at the world, just look. If we don't push the glory of God, things are going to constantly digress. Uh -huh. Just look. Some of the things we allow now would have never been a discussion. Even, listen, I'm not that old. But you can go back 40, 50 years from now. That how we dealt with problems, how we, how we uh, raise our children, the issues our children, listen to me. You, you didn't have to worry about the police if you went to school and jump somebody and rob them. The police is the best thing that could ever happen to you. I mean, I'm not, I'm not listening to me. And, 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 and so. It didn't have to be your mom. Anybody on the block that know that them, 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 them Paul kids, the, you understand? Know that's the Mary kid. But listen, that's, 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 that's Henry Dawn. Shame your butt up, and, and you be, you just be praying to say, you, you, listen, you, you ain't got to tell my daddy now because you don't you don't look me, so let's kill it right here. <laughs> now parents want to start a movement over their devilish child. You know your child's a devil. And people out there marching, talking about set them free. Lock that joke up underneath the jail. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that, listen, the, the, the community is just becoming nothing. The community is just, just dying off when it comes to moral values. And this is something we got to understand. We cannot allow the world to start filtering into the church, dripping into the church, that now we are becoming like them. Whatever the most say, that's what we'll do. If this is popular, then I'll go with it. If this is the movement, I'm good with it. All right? You can't do that. The church got to be a church. Church got to be a place of standing. But with the standards, got to come the the the, the, the supernatural things of God. True. Right. When, 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 you see, you just can't wear long dresses and cover up with turtlenecks and have a bonnet on your head and don't paint your nails and don't wear ear. You, listen, all that is just an outward show of an inward conviction. Amen. But that don't have nothing to do with God's glory. Right. That's right. So that means we can't die of no sicknesses. Amen. We can't live broke. Right. Come on now. Right. Can't, we got to produce the glory of God yes. in every area of our life. Amen. You gonna go before God and say, God, fix me so I can fix my marriage. Amen. Come on. Yes. Come on. Your marriage needs to glorify God. Who is sitting there and grow old and tolerate each other? The older you get, the more tolerable you become. The devil is a liar. No, listen to me. And stop thinking you know God's that you you know what's best for you. You gotta trust the plan of God. Amen. If you don't trust the plan of God, you're gonna be frustrated because your plan ain't manifested. True. I know you think you know what's best. All you know is what you want. That's right. But everything you want, everything you got desire, got to be submitted to the will of God for your life. Amen. Right. Are you listening? Yes. He said, "Well, you know there ain't no men in the church, so you go outside the church to get you one." <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't, you don't. I don't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> but you don't go get a Rottweiler and train him like he's a fool. Right. 
That's right. He don't do that. You don't go get no pit bull and then start acting like he's a chihuahua. Amen. No, certain dogs come with a certain nature. True. That's true. You know, we, we got two pit bulls. Pit bulls. Now, we've had Robbies that, that love to be up under you, climb up, sit on your lap. No, but pit bulls yes. are just too cuddly. They are, yes. Oh, my God. Constantly in your face. You, know, you go to sleep, you wake up, they're in the bed. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you be like, get down, get up. You're, you're allowed to wake me up. Get down, I can't. Get down, get off the bed. How did they look at her? You better go back to sleep. <laughs> don't break your, don't break your sleep, mom. Don't break your sleep. I ain't going nowhere. And if I get down, I'm getting right back up. So let's say both of us are drunk. You go back to sleep. I'm gonna lay here like you, like you ain't saying nothing to me. <laughs> Dodger, he used to have bad breath. You wake his breath wake you up. He, I ain't lying. You be sitting in the bed just let sleep. He come up to your face to lay down. And you smell that boy and you smell that boy and this is not <laughs> Listen, certain dogs have a nature. You don't know if, now at the same time, Dodger is the most cuddly, but he's the main one that'll attack you. Mm -hmm. I was with playing with one of our friends or something, they wrestling, and Dodger uh, jumped on him. Mm -hmm. And she's going to put him in the cage. You don't put him in the cage for doing what he's supposed to do. He's right. supposed to jump on him. Right. Pit bulls don't know jokes. Right, right, right. right. They don't know jokes. No, I mean, if, if you want to play, you laugh, you sniggle, you grin. You get physical, I don't know jokes. Right, right. Yes. Now, it, 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 listen here, now you, you, you don't go get a pit bull and tell him I don't understand why he, he ain't acting like a, a king, uh, uh, what the mother don't laugh, the golden retriever. When he retreat, he, he gonna retrieve body parts, come back to his cage for a trophy. <laughs> Listen, you are gonna represent God. You gotta represent Him in every area, your marriage, your finance, everything. Amen. And, and have, listen, don't think because I love Jesus. Now I'm like, oh, let me let, let me dig up something right quick. This is a cult, this is a, a new culture thing. Uh, uh, since blacks came to America, was. Our upbringing was everything we gonna get, we gonna get in the by and by. We gonna get it when we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. I got shoes. All God's children got shoes. Sorry. We gonna get them shoes when we get to heaven. Get to heaven. Mm -hmm. We gonna put on our shoes. Mm -hmm. That was come from a struggle. Yes. Yes. What well, we're more forgiving through nature. That's true. So true. That's true. No, I'm serious. No, see, because what happened was. You would get beat. And if you held on to that anger, you're going to get another beating. Like, forgiveness was beating to us. Yes. That you got to be beat and then come back in the house like nothing ever happened. Right. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. You, got, you, you can watch your children be snatched away. You got forgiveness. So, so our mindset got to be broken that we're not waiting for a week until we get to hell. Right. Amen. Right, 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 right. No, no. If you look, you look at the, the, the history, of just being nothing. That's what black people consider nothing. <clears throat> and it's not a racial sermon. It's just your history. Mm -hmm. We got all blacks here, so I need to try to help you. Right. Amen. We were nothing. You could be beat. The only reason you would be, somebody would fight for you is because you were on somebody else's property. Mm -hmm. I, know you ain't, I know you didn't hit my horse. That's my horse. If I, you understand? And, 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 and this is what you don't know. You were considered so much as property that the government was paying slave masters for years after slavery for their loss of income. You were just a piece of property. All right? You went from being nothing to now you got to try to fight just to be treated like a human being Amen. or left alone. That's that was the fight. Leave me alone or at least treat me like a human being. The civil rights movement wasn't about glorifying God. The civil rights movement was all about, I just want to either be left alone or treated equal. Right? Then we get into, I want to be equal with them. So even if we give you your space, our mindset was, we ain't nothing until we can sit with them. Now, now you may not like, because y'all like Dr. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was the worst thing that ever happened to black businesses because everybody wanted to go across the street. No, 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 don't be mad at me now. Don't be looking, but you better not tell about Martin Luther King. I'm talking about your mama too. 
<laughs> Martin Luther King wanted us to go and eat at somebody else's restaurant. Think about that mentality. They don't want you there. If I go into Mother Audrey's house, sit at that table, Pop come downstairs and say, hey, get, get him out of here. I don't want to see him in here. Mama ain't got nobody to make no sign. Right. Right. No, I'm getting up out of here. Then he going to be the one in the kitchen cooking? Oh, you want to eat here? Okay. <laughs> Maybe some, some special sauce. No, I don't understand. Think about that. Who wants to be where they not want? That's right. 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 So you see our struggle, our mentality struggle now. Man. Fighting to sit somewhere and, and for somebody to feed you. You got your own lunch counter. Right. Why now are we have the mentality that we nothing until we look and be with them? Right. You know, somebody called me from their church and he said, he said, I'm, I'm afraid my pastor thinks he white. Mm. He said he had a couple of white friends. He got a little, he lived in a white neighborhood. And he talked just like he white. Now he forgot where he come from. He can't identify with the black struggle. He said, I think he, I think he, think he white. <laughs> no, no, listen. Let me tell you something. Stop thinking you nothing until you start connecting with certain people. Right, right. That's right. That's right. Stop thinking that. This has been the, the mentality we've come up here. I'm nothing. At least treat me like a human or leave me alone. I'm nothing until I connect with them. Are you listening? If, unless I got what they got. And then now we go from that transition to now we get into a place. If you're willing to fight for it, you can have it. Then they start making laws that will reduce what your rights are. Amen. They, they, you know, it's a joke on Facebook, but God knows it's true. If you want laws passed against guns, tell every black man to get one. Hmm. No, no, if you want, if you want to see some real changes, then I ain't got none, none, of, none of the company you dog is going this. I'm talking about, look at this, AK-47, I got this, and let's we're going to get some law. We're going to get something up in here. Right, right, right. 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 You know, no more, no, no humans running around here. Let's this here. We ain't got time for that. So the mentality is different. So now we came into the house of God with this I struggle mindset, and my happiness is it's going to come later. If he don't show up, I'm still going to praise him. Yes. But his word promised to show up. Yeah. And now we've been serving a God that hasn't been showing up. But at the same time, you remain faithful. Yeah. Somebody say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Yeah. If you don't understand what God wants to do through you, you'll be fighting for your own agenda to come to pass. And your own agenda could be a curse. Do you know how much further along we would be if we would have not been so hungry just to be a part? Amen. Want to be included? No, no, no. See, you don't, you, don't know, you don't know what we were made of. But you need it. Most of you know a little bit about Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know a little bit about it. You, you, you do know that uh, retired Navy pilots went to the, the government base, borrowed airplanes, dropped bombs on that black community. You know a little bit about it. You know some. I don't know if they made a movie about that yet. Y'all know a little bit. I know they made Rosewood. Rosewood. Now they said they got recorded. I think like 30 or 60 some people died. But but they said it was anywhere between three to 600 people died during Rosewood in Florida. Now, now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If we would have remained conscious of what we could do. Now this is not a white or black thing. This is you personally. If we would have remained conscious what we could accomplish, we would have never been so hungry to be a part of something else. Right. You didn't have to eat that. And we should have never marched to go to a hotel that don't want us. Right. We should have stayed kept in our own hotel. That's what we should have did. Now, this, this is what you don't understand. This country, evil and wickedness, was, was built upon greed. More money. Right. Slavery was about more money. Right. Not that they just hated you. You were free labor. So, so now you get to the place that the money controls the government and if blacks were to remain solid in their head who I am and what I can accomplish by myself. Now, now why is that important? Because as long as you keep thinking you need to be connected to certain people to be something, you'll always be nothing. If I right. get it locked in my head, if I can keep what I got and keep building on this, eventually the government got to come submit to me. 
So, so it's about you understanding. Our upbringing, our history made us have a, a struggle mentality and be comfortable with it. You cannot be comfortable not seeing the glory of God in your life. Right. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's right. Our children are going to do better. My, my wife and I were talking last night or this morning about uh, school and college and all this other stuff and, uh, and, 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 and how we lay a foundation. How we lay a foundation. How families need to come together. Amen. Now it may start with you and your house Amen. that you sit them down and you start teaching them early. You look out for your brother and your sister. Amen. You look out for your brother. You look out for, for each other. Your niece, your niece and your nephews, y'all come together and make sure they get through school. Amen. This ain't gonna fall on one, one person. Amen. Amen. Now this is our agenda. This is our plan. But what if the mother gets strung out? They go get custody, but then we build the foundation yes. that's gonna be unconditional love. Yes. Come on, Amen. Now one of y'all, one of y'all, you tell your to one of y'all may mess up. But your mess up will not affect we'll your not children. Not. We'll I'm coming to get them. That's oh. right. Amen. Now some of y'all, you, you wasn't brought up like that. And you can go ahead if you want to go get them 15 nieces and nephews you got and go drive yourself crazy. I'm talking about a foundation. Amen. You got to build a strong foundation. Amen. Amen. We are not satisfied graduating from high school. Now you know what you got to do. Amen. And nobody talking about your kids, all right? Amen. We graduate from college here. Amen. 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 We graduate and we support. And we go to the games together. Yes. It starts here. Yes. Now listen to me. I don't care what the school says about some, some five uh, uh, tickets to graduation. 100 of us going to be there. Amen. Who, who booking them up? And we ain't going to be poor enough where everybody got to chip in. I hate that chip in stuff. You know? Amen. You might do. Who get the bus? And I got to buy two buses. Do we need them? You don't need all of them. I hate being poor. It's a different mindset. So we got 50 seats and the bus gonna cost a thousand dollars. And so everybody's gonna have to. No, 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 no. Somebody just get a bus. Right. Amen. 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 Listen to me. If you if you don't know who you are and what you can accomplish, if it's starting your household, you can take control of that. So true. You can take control of that. You can get to the place that you are going to talk to these children and tell them, this is what I expect from you. Amen. Right. I don't right. expect you to be competing with your sister and your brother. That's right. Amen. That's right. I expect that if your brother is, is, is about to buy a house, you give him something to warm the clothes. Amen. Amen. That's what I expect from you. And if you are if you are the forerunner financially, I don't expect you to give out money, but I expect you to help them to, to get get to another level. Yeah, right. Listen here, y'all. I, I recommend y'all get a, a two family before you get this single family, because you need to get this income. Right. Mm -hmm. If you do it right, you can you can leave out and you will never pay a mortgage payment or a rent payment. If you do it right, you need to you all need to pull together. Amen. Listen here, family. Listen, I know I make a million dollars a year. Y'all only make a hundred thousand. But what we gonna do? We gonna buy this apartment complex together. Amen. Five years, y'all can buy me out. Y'all buy me out. Amen. Hear me? Yes. Yes. Give me back my hundred. I'm gonna put a hundred thousand down. You gonna put twenty. You gonna put twenty. You can't let them come in nothing. Then come on now. I'm, I'm serious now. Okay. Okay. You putting in twenty. You putting in twenty. You put. I'm putting a hundred thousand. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna buy this four-unit apartment building in three years. You, everybody got to pay me back. $33,333 from you, $33,333 from you, $33,000. Y'all can keep, keep the dollar. <laughs> but the three of y'all are gonna pay me my hundred thousand. Now y'all gonna have extra income coming in. Right, right, right. Now pull me out of it. Come on now. And you can't sell in the agreement. You can't sell your portion to no outside source. You can get mad all you want. Amen. But the property is standing in the fact. Yes. If you don't teach your children this, they'll grow up and compete with one another. That's true. You know, one Sunday the Lord laid in my heart. Man, I'm telling you, that thing hit me so hard, bro. I, I knew exactly what it was, but some of y'all ain't ready for the truth. And the Lord told me, he said, tell these parents, watch these kids that's in competition. I know some of y'all roll your eyes at me and all this other stuff, but that, I, I, I don't care. I'm going to say what God tells me to say. Right. And, you know, one, 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 one child getting married, the other child all of a sudden got suddenly sick. Right. She's going to fall down the steps. Mm. Well, you'll stay here. That's right. But you'll stay right here. You don't fall. You fall. Now, if you know who them children are. You know. If you don't know, the devil already won. That's true. That's true. You got to be truthful with your children. You're doing this for attention. Yes. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with you. 
Stand right here. Yeah, we going to the wedding. Then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you sitting right here? You need a pillow in the tank? Come we out. That's right. If you can't join the celebration, you then you you disconnected from this family. Right. Ain't nobody gonna stay here and come nurse you. Right. Every time it's time to celebrate somebody up, you die. You die. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you when they, they see that car pull out, they're going to be like, what the? <laughs> I can't believe they leave me here like this here. <laughs> you just I mean, you got to build a strong base so that we can produce the glory of God. Amen. We can't keep struggling generation after generation. That's right. Yeah. So, let me say something. I said something. <clears throat> I know some of y'all don't agree, but it's all right. You get, you get mad with me. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You ain't got no business going on no vacation and you ain't and you ain't got money for your child's education. Amen. Amen. Sit your retarded self down. Amen. You, you listen to me. Oh, God. Because if we don't produce the glory of God, some basic things got to be done. Right. Amen. Somebody say, I'm going to Hawaii next year. You know your child got a student loan and you're going to let them stress out about that. And you out there want something. How do you feel so comfortable and good and you ain't got $2 to give to? Come on, y'all need to make me cut somebody out. <laughs> you don't qualify. Now listen to me. You, you can't do, you do what you can do. If you can't get water from a rock, then come on, then you don't stress yourself out. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Some of you don't have the, uh, maybe the finances to help or whatever you can't do, but whatever I can, I'm going to do. Amen. Amen. Listen to me, your heart got to be in the right place. That's right. If I got money to go to Hawaii, guess what? I'm going to Atlantic City. Yes. Close my eyes and hit the water. I'd be anywhere I want to be there. Yes. <laughs> but I can't spend two or three thousand dollars knowing my child is stressed out over a student loan. The devil is a liar. Yes. My season hasn't come yet. Yes. And it's coming back. Yes. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Yes. Shall your children give unto you. Yes. God don't give us a man that. You say that trying to beat you, you don't if you want to. Right. Your children got a right to pull back into you. Yes. Y'all sit there trying to say, no, no, live your life. No, no, get in my car. Mm -hmm. Get in my car. Get in my car. Yeah. Yeah. My son was two or three somethings. Yes. Amen. He did something, broke a window one time. I told him, I said, boy, you owe me a whole house. He said, a whole house, dad? I said, a whole goddamn house. You broke a window? I want a whole new house. That's it. Y'all sit there telling your kids, I, I, you don't owe me nothing. You owe me. God, don't yes. <laughs> All this sacrifice that I've been doing. Yes. Yeah, you owe me. You owe me. You may not know all what I've done, but you, you just know you owe me. Amen. God, darling, and many kids I got, that's how many vacations you and you, you send me and your mama on. I don't care, no, don't tell me nothing. Come on, we gonna pitch in. No, you ain't. Amen. They don't pitch in here. You got a room up. You got Hawaii. You got Cancun. Come on out. Everybody, put, put them in the bag. Whatever you pull, that's what you want to do, man. That's on you. I don't know where you're gonna get the money from. If you listen to me, you you got to build a strong foundation yeah. that you ain't got to worry about no nursing home. That's right, man. That's right. Man. If you keep yeah. depending on outside help, then the, the house is not strong. Woo. That's true. That's true. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing with that house? Yeah, in my house, Dad. No, 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 no. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. No, no, because I might need to move in here. Mm -hmm. And I need someone on the ground level. Yes. <laughs> my son, six story. Who wants it? Don't put my bedroom up there. That's right. Just, all right. I'll be in the living room. <laughs> when, your, when your friends come over, they'll say, Your dad in the living room? Yeah. And listen, and listen, when you get a little older, they say that bladder starts a little leaking a little bit. So <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, they say, Your, good, your, your living room smells kind of. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'm a hundred. When you get a hundred and one, you can do anything. You can walk over to the plant, get to the plant. And y'all feel like walking to the bathroom. When you're on the one, you can play anything on the mess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You better hope I'm saved and sanctified. I'll be standing there on my robe. I can't be screaming. Mommy, pop, pop, baby. Pop, pop, show this stuff to the mail, lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, if you don't get the right mindset that I got to build so that I won't be dependent, you'll always be dependent. That's right. Now, he said, why is that a black thing? Because of the culture, how we were brought up in America, that we always needed outside help to be a success. The more children you have, the more secure that foundation is going to be. 
Right. It's basic things. Mm -hmm. No, 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 son. You don't buy no car with rims and all that stuff now. Right. Get the garage first. Yes. 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 Right. You get the garage first. You don't need to be out here to ride your friends around that's going to tap your car. That's right. Yeah. And then look at you buck out it when you talk about you need to alternate. Right. Right. Yeah, well, hit us up when you get it, dog, when you want right. No, 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 no. You was riding in it, right? Right. So, so you listen to me. You got to know I got to glorify God. I can't glorify God with the wrong mindset. I got to have the right mind. I got to be concerned about how my kids are going to step off. Amen. Listen to me. You ain't got life insurance. You're a nut. You're half crazy. Mm -hmm. I ain't think we'll get that quiet. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have a final listen, Deacon Holden got a financial obligation. Amen. Whether he dead mm -hmm. and gone or alive. You got a financial obligation. It's true. It's true. Well, some, the Lord will take you. No, no, you, know, you are the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you you can listen to me. If I die, you know, she's gonna cry a little bit. <laughs> you know when, 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 my, when my mom died and my stepmother they take the policy and they get paid first the funeral get and they work the, the insurance stuff that's the way they want to make sure they get paid and then they send you the difference she ever cried till that mailman come through right. <laughs> 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 mom will back feel better now <laughs> I always told my wife when I die, go get yourself a new car. Go get yourself a new car. Keep a new car. I don't care what people say. Lay it for people. The ham sandwich with them. Y'all know I don't want no ham sandwich. You know what I'm gonna put. Lay it for what people say. Let her husband die, and she wouldn't but bring drive it to the funeral. Right. You got to be concerned about what people. Listen, I got a responsibility to make sure you're right. Amen. So you heard to get your own policy and cash it real quick. If you got to delay the funeral, delay the funeral. I'm already gone. So you ain't offending me. And don't be spending all this money on no, on no dead man. Come on now. Come on. I know some of y'all gonna go all out, want the casket to be remote controlled. No. <laughs> <laughs> the devil is a liar. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Put me in a pine box, bury me like a soldier. Just drop right there. Just, just the same way they buried a buffalo soldier, do me fine. Pine box. Some of them even get a pine box. Pine box. Drop me down. Don't get no big old statue thing. I want a regular plate on the ground. Amen. That's it. Bury me like a soul. <clears throat> don't, don't go trying to bury me in no big old shindig and all that stuff. The devil is alive. Amen. I might even sit on my budget right now. You know, I'm going to go buy my own casket. I don't yeah. trust none of y'all. <laughs> and don't worry about people talking about you. You took the pastor money and, and look, at that, look at that casket. <laughs> she she could have did better than to put her on there. That's the boy this casket itself. Might might build it. Might have you make build me one. And you make build it. Forgot some screws out of fall at the bottom. Of it. <laughs> Deacons be carrying me, and I just come right around the bottom. If we don't change our thinking, our financial thinking, we can't change. See, you want God to override your ignorance and your, your ignorant lifestyle, your ignorant mindset, so that he can produce his book. But he can't do that. If you want to grow financially, you got to be able to build right there at home. Amen. Let me tell you something. Just because you won't, don't mean you're going to get it. That's right. Just because you you think you know I really want this for my family, that don't mean this because you want to mean nothing. That's right. That's right. True. People are so lazy; they won't work for nothing, and they love these fools that tell them God will do something for them. That's just like me sitting here right now. This this how, this how that way people be passing out cars, houses, debt cancellation, all those stuff. I speak twenty pounds off your life right now. Yeah, twenty pounds gone. You ain't gonna shout, cause you know I ain't did nothing, and I ain't about to throw away the rest of this cake. Yeah. <laughs> I got these pies and cake at home, potato chip, and all this stuff. I'm not about to throw away all this good ice cream. The devil is a liar. So me, me trying to speak twenty pounds off of you 
is the same way that liar is trying to tell you your debt going to be wiped out and you ain't doing nothing to wipe it out. Right. Come on. Right. Come on. Right. You're not ready for God to wipe out your debt. You keep creating debt. Yeah. That's so true. So if I'm going to grow, I got to grow with the perspective. I got to change my thinking. My financial perspective on money got to change. I cannot allow the devil to trick me and make me believe I need somebody else to become great. Amen. Greatness in my family starts with me. Come on. Do you hear me? Amen. That's right. You got to talk to your kids like they, and listen, they know everything else. Sing all those stupid songs, all this stuff. Turn it up. Turn it off. Turn this here. Yes. <laughs> you don't listen to me. If we don't wake up, if we don't allow God in, let me read the scripture because I just, I heard Sister Matthew say he read that whole half hour <laughs> and hang for ain't pull up one scripture yet. Go, go ahead to Matthew's five. Let me let me read this again. I read it last week. Matthew five and thirteen from the New Living Translation. If it's all right. Because I need you to understand God can't work if you're ignorant to how, how the system works in the earth. You can't put a, a transmission in, in the back seat of the car and ask God, make it go fast, Lord. You gotta put the transmission where it belongs. Right. That's right. That's true. Listen to me. Stop being so deep and stupid. Yes. Yes. You know, somebody somebody said this. He said, God said, God really opened doors. When you get up and turn the knob, come on. <laughs> People lay on their back. Don't worry, God opened that door. No, I ain't. If we don't get out of this ignorance, you gotta work. Play out hard. That's right. Listen, you know, look, the, um, I was talking to someone about where I live, and um, and I told him, I said, where I live, glorify God, because nobody can say, because everybody think preachers steal all the money. Mm -hmm. If, I'm telling you, y'all ain't you know, think. Some of y'all say, oh, yeah, I've been watching you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, everybody think preachers steal money. But when they see my house and come here, they know he, 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 he well, something, something ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> no, because everything now is God. Yes. God told me a long time ago, you don't need thousands of members for me to be God in your life. Yes. That was, we was in Williamsburg when God told me that. Right. Right. He said, just do what I tell you. Yes. Speak what I tell you. You don't need a thousand members for me to show up. Amen. Amen. They ain't get up there hollering and down the every church is ran I'm not saying nobody wrong. But I ain't get up there and take no five hours to raise no offering. Mm -hmm. right. Gotta preach a whole hour to get you to give an extra hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I come from when they used to lock the door. Y'all don't know about that. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, I said lock the door. Ain't nobody leaving. Ain't nobody going to the bathroom till we get this here money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And they say, y'all know, y'all know, because that's why y'all y'all don't give it all in the, in the first go round. Right. <laughs> you hold on a couple more. I, I did it. I did it. I didn't make sense a lot. I did that. You know, first offering, you you got ten dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you give, you you gonna give ten, cause you but you know they're coming back around. Right? Right. So you put, you drop that five like a big ball of shot call. Yeah. Bam! Yeah. <laughs> you drop that joker like like it's a big joker. Come on now. And you need one more book. You drop that. <laughs> You lay it there. Because you know they're going to come back around. They're going to, you know, rip, rip me over on, on the thing like this. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to give them another five. Right, right. And I need everybody else to get to give me two. Get two. And then they'll just say, I don't work for it. Mm. And they walk around again, and you get that two dollars. Yeah. And so what we working with. Now, all the time, now, he, he trying to prime the pump. Right. Get that money for it. He probably pump. He leaned down there again. Uh, we're almost there. We're almost there. But you can't go back. I give you five. I give you two. Now I'm gonna give you one more. If it end with the one more, I'm I'm two dollars richer than when I take out. I'm gonna give to you. But since it's gone made away. No, I don't need to do all that. You you don't understand the benefit of giving if I got to prime you like that. So I can get no. You love God, give him, then leave it alone. Amen. Work with it. It ain't your money. Amen. 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 My wife and I we were talking about some stuff. Some money was in the bank, blah, blah, blah. And my wife said, I don't remember you got that tie check. I said, I never even counted the tie check, but that ain't my money. Mm -hmm. That ain't my money. I ain't, that ain't even in the equation. Mm -hmm. 
I'm at the point now. I rather I rather be with my life now. Y'all don't don't y'all say this because you're you're, you're you're yeah you don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm at the point now. My life can be off before I rob God. The devil is a liar. <clears throat> I, I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna enjoy myself, amen. knowing God is in there with me. Yes, amen. Now don't y'all say that. Don't y'all say it. some of you y'all. <laughs> you are the salt of the earth. Salt is a preserver. You know, any food, you now I'm not, this, this is a heavy if you don't know how to cook. Any food you have, salt have a way of enhancing the flavor. Yes. Too much of chili. Yes. But just enough will enhance the flavor of any food. Right. Salt is something that you you it, it will not only preserve it, it'll keep it to a point where it will not spoil. Mm -hmm. You're the salt of the earth. Yeah. The world has hope because of you. Amen. Amen. This is me. Me wanting the church to grow has nothing to do with I think what I got ain't good enough. Right, right. Don't ever think, oh, Pastor ain't happy with, with us. Happy to pastor don't appreciate us. The devil is a liar. If you ever had a thought that said Pastor taking us for granted, it was the devil, you need to tell him he's a liar. That's right. Amen. I don't I don't just have a membership. We have high quality membership. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the people that serve in this place are about something. I don't think nobody have food strong. Oh, no. Well, I don't know if you got food stamp. If you do, you can talk to me in the service. <laughs> but we ain't got no well for recipients here. Churches, we have, listen, I'm not talking about that we better than it. I'm just talking about what we have here. Amen. We have people that, that have jobs, the same job, 10, 15 years. Now, you know, that ain't right. That, some people get a job where they got to change them like you change yes. yours. No, we have we have dependable people here. Amen. Amen. People that's gonna start it. The quality you don't ever think me wanting to grow have anything to do with a lack of appreciation for what we have. Sure. You're the soul of the earth. This 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 earth got hope because of you. Mm -hmm. Because of you. Amen. You're the reason God said this birth this this earth has no meaning without you. Amen. God built this earth for His children to have dominion. You are the reason hope is still here. Amen. All right, you're the salt of the earth, but when the salt has lost its flavor, can it? Can it? Can you make it salty again? Mm -hmm. It will be thrown out and trampled under the un, underfoot as worthless. Verse fourteen. You are the light of the world, the the like world. a city on a hilltop mm -hmm. that cannot be hidden. Come on. No one likes a lamp. No one likes a lamp and then put it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Mm -hmm. You are the light of the world. Amen. Amen. You are the reason that God wants to raise you up to show everybody who he is. Amen. People don't know who God is because they, you know, reading the Bible every day. Right. Come on now. Being a theologian is not what press God. I say this all the time. Church preachers are preaching what they know and not what they told. Mm -hmm. right. My job is not to sit up here, you know, and this is no this is no lie. I I heard a preacher, a, a respected preacher say, if you can't quote all the books in the Bible, you, you need to question your love for God. Mm. Now, I don't know about you, but I never Quoted all the books in the Bible in sequence and fix the problem. Right. 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 I'm telling you, once I, once I get past Exodus, boy, I'm in a little trouble. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm a little better with the New Testament. That's that. Them names give you a little rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, but the, the Old Testament, boy, in the middle, Leviticus and all them other stuff and yes. the ones I've never even read in. <clears throat> I ain't got trying to impress you like I'm gonna hold Bible. That's right. Amen. Amen. Knowing the word of God to live it. it. You just can't get the word and think you know God. Amen. We got to have manifestation. Yes. You are the light of the world. Yes. You are the listen, the light you show will show the world who God is. Amen. The world don't know God unless we become the light. Amen. Amen. Your family need to be a light. Amen. I didn't tell you right now, you ain't gonna have no perfect kids. That's true. You, I know you think they're perfect in front of you. Yeah. I'm telling you something, these kids, boy, they just, they just, yeah. <laughs> Live on. That's true. Amen. You, you, you can pour and you can teach and all you want to do. These kids get they act a little crazy sometimes. They act like they ain't got no mama, no daddy, no teaching. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Some of them, I'm telling you, some of them ain't going to believe fire hot till they get burned. Right. Mm -hmm. 
and, 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 and for us to be there to say, I told you so, you just know you ain't going to just act like some of y'all was when y'all was a kid. Right. Right. You got to get to the place. I got to build a foundation. That foundation got to be structured on, on, on sound information that I know going to glorify God. Amen. I can't grow up and grow out. No, no, we growing up and growing together. Amen. We grown up and we going to, listen, we going to have something that the world will be able to look back and say, you know, I want, I want that. Do you have anything in your life that, that the world will look at and say, wow, I can see the hand of God on your life? Now, listen to me. The foundation of God's glory, said it this morning, is how you treat other people. That's the fact. Listen, no matter what you ride, where you live, how much money you got, how you treat other people is the foundation of you producing the glory of God. So I was a praying, and uh, and you know what? Here's the thing. You know, I've been really praying to God about church growth, and um, and I've just been reading a lot, and just really want to understand, you know, why why is it that the church is not growing in number? <clears throat> and uh, and God began to give me some things to do, right? And I check this out. This is the truth. He gave me some things to do. What we should do for people, reaching out to the poor, and then after I'm getting excited, thinking that's what's going to cause church growth. He said, that don't have nothing to do with church growth. <laughs> that just have something to do with you doing what I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, because here's the thing. And I had to catch myself. I want the church to grow, and I'm, we still pushing for church growth. You understand that? Yes. But I got to understand, I can't be frustrated when I know I did what God told me to do. That's it. That's it. He said, upon this rock, upon this rock, I'll build, I will build my church, right. and the gates of hell will not prevail. Well, I can't try to force something I want. Right. I just got to keep doing what God tells me to do. Right. Jesus never left the house. He sent his servants out to go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. That's right. He sent them out two or three times. Go invite my friends. He said, well, so invite them. They said they're busy. Some said they just got married. They got to go home to that. Some said they just bought some cows. Some just said they bought some field. He said, well, go ahead and invite these other people. He said, we invited them, but they still didn't come. He said, they go out to the highways and the hedges. Compel them to come. Then he said, get the lame, the blind. Get them here. Now, this is what you got to understand. If I'm going to be a help to the kingdom of God, then I got to be willing to do what God tells me to do, and I can't have an expected return on my obedience. I'm just doing what you tell me, and then I'm trusting you for the rest. If you're going to be a light, how, how I treat other people is about me obeying God. My wife and I were looking at something last night, and I told my wife, I said, this is the power of freedom. The power of freedom is for people can do what they want, where they want, wear what they want, and, and not be feeling like they, like, you know, a freak. Right. Yeah, you wear what you want. You, want to. Right. you come in here with some yellow socks on, one yellow, one pink, and a purple hat, and whatever else you want. Line shirt, red pants. Just be free. Yeah, that's you. You like it? Yeah. Go for it. When I see people looking a certain way, all I, only thing I say is, that's not for me. Right. That's not for me. And I wear my style, and I, I don't care about what people be thinking. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I'm sitting there, I look in the mirror, I like what I see, I'm gone. Right. Why are we coming in and telling us what you think, bro, Deacon? Mm -hmm. It look like a homo to me. What am I going to do? Oh, <laughs> let me go throw these clothes away. No, no. Everybody got their own opinion. Right, right. How I treat other people, when I see somebody that's different, I need to know my position. Everybody don't want to look like you. Right, right. That's right. Besides, the clothes some people wear don't come in your size. That's so you should shut up. That's right. <laughs> I wouldn't wear that to get you a million dollars. <laughs> they don't make that. So you couldn't get a million dollars right. in your size. No, learn how to take the people that are different. Mm -hmm. People ain't gonna have your style. Right, right. People can wear their hair and the kind of way they want. That's right. I used to tell my wife, you know, this, this, this hair ain't even yours. She said, I bought it, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> she said, if I bought it, it's mine. <laughs> yep. Yep. People ain't gotta have your hairstyle. Right. You can't, you can't run people off because they don't want to look like you. That's true. You, you don't have the right to tell what somebody else might ugly. Come on now. Oh, you I know you you ain't gonna no no no. No no that's not that's not where you are. You you're gonna treat other people right. That's right. Because let me tell you something, if you don't have it in your heart to treat everybody right, 
you subconsciously will be making just passing judgment, saying things and doing things that have, you can't produce the glory of God. When you think you're better than somebody else. Amen. I see certain cars and that ain't, that, ain't, that ain't for me. You ever seen somebody get a nice car and then try to help it out? Putting rims on something that you, that, you don't put rims on that. Why would you do that? That just, that just ain't for me. Right. You like it? I love it. You want that hairstyle? You can see the hairstyle I like. I brush, I, I brush it a certain way. Don't try to copy me. Wait. You understand? Know because there's only one of me. Right, right, right. You try to try to brush it the way I brush mine, you understand? You, you're gonna be some, some, everybody can't do a little cut. Sure. Everybody can't do that. Somebody, come on, somebody, we don't need help. That's true. We need help. Now, if you don't know, I'm gonna give you the tester. Pull it back. Comb it back. And it'd be real low. You see how you're looking. Give you indication whether or not you can go fall. You pull it back, you look up, and you holler at your own self. Pull it back forward. Mm -hmm. But whatever you got, you like going with it. Right. I'm going to love you in regards. Yes, right. Amen. You ain't mine. I don't care what you have. Right. I'm going to mind my business. Amen. Now, I may, I may chuckle at you a little bit, but, mm -hmm. I mean, but I ain't gonna, I'm not going to mistreat you because you wearing something. I would, I would get up out of the casket and take off and get back in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you put that on me, I'm dead. I'm going to get up and say, the devil is Get back in the cab, let on put my drawers. Don't put that drawers on. You know what I'm saying? Learn how to treat people right is the foundation to you glorifying God. Do you know you, you ever had somebody in the neighborhood that was just nice and sweet all the time? You can't remember the car they had, but you remember the kindness. Like every, when I was coming up, every neighborhood had somebody that was extra sweet. I remember I lived at 325 Notion Avenue. There was a lady who lived at 327 on the top floor. Her name was Miss Tiny. Miss Tiny was blind in one eye. Miss Tiny stayed drunk. I don't think I ever saw Miss Tiny sober. Miss Tiny was one of the sweetest ladies in all the neighborhood. You're not outside and number kids getting ice cream and you don't. Not why Miss Tiny was there. Not my, and her husband knew the program. His name was Tate. J James Tate. And she called, Tate, come here. Give me some money. She'd walk up to me and say, why you ain't got no ice cream? Oh my God, Miss Tiny. And I never saw Miss Tiny sold. That's the God's honest truth. Never. Miss Tiny would walk up to me. They used to call me Little Jimbo. Little Jimbo, come here. And they would, she would give me $5. And then you don't understand, as a kid, getting $5. I mean, I, I, I would have I would have bought a mansion if somebody would have took me shopping. <laughs> Five dollars to a six and seven year old? Now, now listen to me. I don't even know. I don't even remember if she had a car. But I remember how sweet she was. Right, right. I remember an old lady on Gates, right around the corner on Gates and Notion. She used to have what when I was coming up, they used to call a penny candy store. Yeah. Don't remember about that. Everything was a penny except the caramel things. Those three for five cents, right? And all the cookies were a penny. All the candy was a penny. You can walk in there with twenty-five cents. Come back with at least two cavities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always remember she would count the cookies and then throw a couple extra in. Y'all don't know about that. Y'all don't know about that. See, here's the thing. I don't remember whether she had a diamond ring on, whether she had on Gucci shoes. Right. What I remember right. was you gonna get extra cookies. Right. She always do an extra tinted rolls. Oh my God! You used to get the oatmeal cookies, the lemon, they have chocolate chip. Them hard cookies, them cookies were hard and raw, crunchy. They were like potato chips. They used to be in a big box. She would take them out, put them in your bag, and then she would say, "Hold your bag, go put a couple more." Come on, man. You. My dad was good friends with Mr. Ike. Mr. Ike was um, he was from Pakistan or, or Iran, one of them places. And uh, those were the only one people used to have at the corner store. He used to call them the Arab store. That we call all the stores with them. We didn't know whether they were in Pakistan, Iran, Afghanistan. All we knew was it's the Arab store. That's what we called them. You would go in Mr. Ike's store, used to be uh, 325 Notion Avenue, where it used to then became a video store. Mr. Ike, I would always go in there, you know, the neighborhood called me Little Jimbo. And they said, What you get, Little Jimbo? And I would say, I, you know, I, my favorite. I was just telling my wife, my favorite was the Moon Pie and barbecue corn chips. You give me that, boy. 
I'm telling you, do whatever you say. <laughs> so the potato chip was 25 cents. The moon pie was 20 cents. A lot of times I came up short, but I knew Mr. Ike. All right, all right, all right. Mr. Ike was, how much you got? He knew I was coming in there. And he said, all right, go ahead. He, you owe me, though. I've been on Mr. Ike for years. I can't remember if Mr. Ike had a gold chain on. I can't remember if Mr. Ike pulled up in a car. All I knew was Mr. Ike was going to make sure I got my moon pie and my barbecue corn chips. One time I went into the store. I didn't know how to read the coupons. It said save 20 cents. I thought it meant save, if I save 20 cents, I can come get the same <laughs> So I went into the store as a kid. I got the, the, the it was a, a cereal coupon I got. I laid it on the counter with 20 cents. And Mr. Ike said, what do, you, what do you want? He said, yo, you can't get this. I said, I saved 20 cents. And I want my cereal. This is the God's on this is the truth. This is the true story. I sat there for about 30 minutes with Mr. Ike. He said, little Jim, put that cereal back. You can't get this cereal for 20 cents. I said, you got the coupon. I saved 20 cents and I want my cereal. I started crying and boy, Mr. Ike put the cereal in the bag and said, get out of here and don't come back here with no more coupon. <laughs> Man, I went upstairs with Tim. I mean, I was crying. I was really crying because I had saved 20 cents. You understand? For a five, six year old, 20 cents, you can buy three cars with that. So I saved my 20 cents and I went up there and my mom said, where you get the cereal? I said, I bought it from Mr. Ike. She said, where do you get the money from? I said, I saved my, I saved 20 cents. And my mom said, that don't mean you can <laughs> Listen, what have you done 40 years from now, somebody will know Right, right, wow. What kid will be talking about you in church 30 years from now? Our impact has nothing to do with what we got. That's right. It has everything to do with what we do to people. If you are going to represent the kingdom of God, somebody need to be talking about Sister Holden, Miss Holden, Mr. Holden, Mr. Eubanks, Mr. Bryant, yeah. and what they did for me. Right. That's true. Your name don't need to be spoken of on TV, yeah. but in your community. That's right. Make a difference. That's right. Amen. Make a difference. Get you up. Get you every year. You out in your yard, you get you a pit, and you pass out hamburgers and hot dogs. Mm -hmm. I don't care what, but you need to make an impact. Yeah, okay. This is where the glory of God starts. Mm -hmm. How you treat others. Amen. That's true. I send my kids to school, and I would tell them, if you know somebody that don't have lunch or whatever they're doing or going on a trip, I said, you make sure you, you buy for them. But you let them know nobody's going through what I've been through. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to do that. Buy them lunch. Make sure you give. Make sure you buy them some lunch, and you make. And you don't. Don't try to be all crazy. Very discreetly. Right. You know who ain't got no money. You know who come from a poor family. You know who talking about something. I ain't, I'm not hungry, and their stomach is raw, raw, raw. Of course they hungry. Right. And you go ahead, and you you treat them, and you you treat them right. If we gonna glorify God, we gotta think more than just ourselves. Because yeah. if it's all about you and your children. My kids have so many sneakers, and they don't they don't wear out. I ain't lying to you. you Alex was throwing away some sneakers. I took them sneakers, and I said, what I'm going to do is wash, I'm going to wash these. I'm going to clean them up. These sneakers are going to be a blessing to somebody else. Because first of all, Alex don't wear cheap sneakers. The cheapest, she wearing them ugly vans and stuff like that. One of them kids spend $125 on the ugliest pair of sneakers you ever saw in your life. Yeah, yeah. I ain't lying. <clears throat> she called me one time and said, oh, Lord, they got these sneakers. Oh, Jesus, I'm telling you, Jesus brought these niggas down from heaven and put them on the shelf. And <laughs> <laughs> she pulled them sneakers out of my apple. I, I lost my appetite. <laughs> Listen, clean them sneakers up and give them to somebody that's less for No, no, it's not about you trying to look down. Because that's, right. that's a come up for a kid Amen. that got to wear the same sneakers all year. I don't know why these kids think they get sneakers, both get sneakers every month. Right. I got sneakers no more than twice a year. That's the God's on the truth. And you better not ever be outside in your Sunday shoes. Mm -hmm. Them Sunday gonna need you, them with the Lord shoes. That's right, that's right. Them go for church. And you be out there playing if you want and scuff them up, you'll get your butt put up, beat like you stole something. 
I need you to have a heart for somebody else other than yourself. Amen. Amen. Think about somebody else. Father, thank you for allowing us to produce your glory. Yes. We have more than enough always. As we live for you and we represent you, God, I pray that you would constantly increase us, that we can re represent you, not just in what we wear, what we do, but in how we treat other people. Yes. That they may grow, that they may flourish. That they may be <clears throat> impacted in a positive way because of what you put on our hearts and on our minds. Yes. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you the glory. Now have your way in our life forever. In Jesus' name, amen.